solving quadratic congruences with prime modulus. Brought to you by me. So first a definition, a quadratic congruence is a congruence of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero mod p for now. So we're assuming the mod is prime. It's more complicated if the mod is not prime. So you solved quadratic equations in college algebra and remember what the three methods we used were. One was factoring, two was complete the square, and three was the quadratic formula. We will use one and two here, but not three. So let's start with a simple example. y squared is congruent to three mod 11. Okay, well, three is not a perfect square, but three is congruent to 14 mod 11. I know, just added 11. That's not a perfect square either. But if we add 11 again, we get 25, which is a perfect square, mod 11. So I could rewrite that as y squared is congruent to 25, which is exactly the same as 3, mod 11. So if y squared is 25, that means either y is congruent to 5, mod 11, or y is congruent to negative 5, mod 11. So that's y is congruent to 5, or negative 5 is the same as positive 6, mod 11. And remember, you can always check your work to see if these answers are correct. If we take 5 and square it, we get 25. And if we reduce that mod 11, it is congruent to 3, mod 11. And if we take 6 and square it, we get 36 which again, 11 goes into 33, so that would be congruent to 3 mod 11. So we know that both answers check out, and we have the correct answers. So here's another very similar example. You could pause the video here and give this one a try before you watch the solution. So we know that 10 is congruent to 23 mod 13, is congruent to 36 mod 13 and 36 is a perfect square so we're going to stop there y squared is congruent to 36 mod 13 so y is either congruent to 6 mod 13 or y is congruent to negative 6 mod 13 which is the same as positive 7 mod 13 and again, you can check your answers and verify that those are, in fact, the correct solutions to this congruence. Okay, so this one's a little bit more complicated. We've got an x term here. We're going to do this one by factoring. So when I factor that polynomial, I know if it factors, the first two terms are going to be x, since I've got an x squared. I've got a negative x term and a positive constant, so I know that both signs in the middle have to be negative. And two things that multiply to positive 6 and add to negative 5 are negative 2 and negative 3, congruent to 0, mod 11. So I've got two numbers multiplied together, getting 0, with a prime mod. And the prime mod is really important here. Two numbers multiplied together equaling 0, if the mod is prime, then that means that either one is zero, mod 11, or the other factor is zero, mod 11. Now why is it important that the mod is prime? Let's suppose the mod was eight. Then we can have two non-zero numbers multiply together to get zero. If one number is two, the other number is four, multiply them together, mod eight, and you've got zero. So we can't use this property for factoring if the mod wasn't prime here. Okay, so we're going to continue. x is congruent to 2 mod 11, or x is congruent to 3 mod 11. And again, you can plug those into the original congruence and make sure it works, and those are the correct solutions.
Example 4. We could try to factor this one, but I'm going to show you how to do it with completing the square. So the first thing I'm going to do is move the constant to the right-hand side of the equation. So subtract 6 from both sides, mod 13. And I have purposely left space on both sides of the congruence. Because what we want to do is we want to add a constant to the left-hand side that makes that a perfect square. So since the x squared coefficient is 1, if we just take half of this number, the x coefficient, and square it, so half of 8 is 4, squared is 16, so I'm going to add 16 to both sides. By design, that makes this left-hand side a perfect square. And it factors to x plus half of what that middle number was, quantity squared. You can check to make sure that's accurate. If you multiply this back out, you are going to get x squared plus 8x plus 16, if you do it correctly. Okay, so now that's congruent to 10, mod 13. Okay, so we've got a perfect square on the left-hand side. We want a perfect square on the right-hand side, and now we're going to do the same kind of trick we did before. 10 is congruent to 23 is congruent to 36 mod 13. So I've got x plus 4 squared congruent to 36 mod 13. So now that means that either x plus 4 is congruent to 6 mod 13, or x plus 4 is congruent to negative 6 mod 13. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides over here. x congruent to 2 mod 13. I'm going to subtract 4 here, and I'm going to get negative 10, which is the same as positive 3 mod 13. So 2 and 3 are the two solutions. So you can plug them back into the original congruence just to make sure they work. Okay, so now in example 5, we've added another complication. We've got a leading coefficient that isn't 1 here. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of that. We want to figure out what we can multiply the congruence by to get a 1 there, which means, you guessed it, we want to now find the inverse of 3 mod 17. So 1 is congruent to 18 mod 17, and 18 is 6 times 3. So if I multiply through by 6, I'm going to get 1 there. So let me do that. I got 18x squared plus 30x, I've got to multiply everything by 6, is congruent to 60 mod 17. Now let's simplify those coefficients, mod 17, before we continue. So 18x squared is the same thing as x squared, plus 30x is the same thing as 13x, so I could write it that way, but I actually want this to be an even number here to complete the square, so I'm going to leave that one 30x. You'll see why in a minute. Is congruent to, what is 60? reduce to mod 17. 60 reduces to 9. Mod 17, since 17 goes into 51. Okay, so now what am I going to add to both sides? I want to take half of this coefficient again and square it. So half of 30 is 15. I'm going to add 15 squared to both sides. Okay, And if I had reduced that and I had 13x there, what I would be saying is we don't want to take half of an odd number because we don't want to introduce fractions. So we would have added 17 to that coefficient, which is legal mod 17, to make it an even number. Okay, so now we've got x plus 15 quantity squared is congruent to 9 plus 15 squared, which is 234. And that reduces to 13 mod 17. Okay, so now what we need to do is to put the right-hand side into a form of a perfect square. So we've got x plus 15 squared congruent to, now what about 13 mod 17? 13 is congruent to 30, congruent to 47 mod 17, so I'm adding 17, congruent to 64, and 64 is a perfect square. Okay, so we've got x plus 15 is congruent to 8, mod 17, or x plus 15 is congruent to negative 8, 
on 17. Okay, so we're going to subtract 15 from both sides here. X is congruent to 8 minus 15 is negative 7. And I'm going to call that 10 mod 17. All right, I can add 17 to it. And over here, we've got x congruent to negative 8 minus 15 is negative 23. And if you add 17 to that twice, you end up with 11. So that's congruent to 11 mod 17. So x is congruent to 10 and 11 mod 17 are the two solutions. And again, you can plug them into the original congruence and make sure they work. So you can grade your own test for me. Example six is very similar to the previous example. So you should pause the video first and try to solve this one on your own. Okay, so the first thing that you did was found the inverse of two mod 19. And that turns out to be 10. So we multiply through by 10. We've got 20x squared plus 70x is congruent to 90, mod 19. Then we're going to reduce things. 20 is the same as 1. Now 70x reduces to 13x, but we want an even x coefficient here. So I'm going to take that 13 and add 19 back to it for 32x. You could leave it as 70x, you just have bigger numbers to reduce as well. But we want that x coefficient to be an even number to complete the square. And 90 mod 19 reduces to 14. Okay, so now we're going to take half of the x coefficient again and square it and add to both sides. So we're going to take plus 16 squared and this side factors to x plus 16 quantity squared, and 14 plus 16 squared is congruent to 270, so equal to 270, and I'm going to reduce that mod 19, and it reduces to 4. Mod 19, which is nice since 4 is a perfect square. So we're going to have x plus 16 is congruent to positive 2, mod 19, or x plus 16 is congruent to negative 2, mod 19. And then we're going to subtract 16 from both sides here, and we get x is congruent to negative 14, which is the same as positive 5, mod 19. So there's one solution. And here we're going to get x is congruent to negative 18, which is the same as positive 1 mod 19. And again, you can plug those into the original congruence to verify that they are the correct answers. I hope that helps and you have an awesome day. Our 90 artist.